You are seated in the throne of Christ. You are the body of Christ. And since Jesus is over Satan, since Jesus is over principalities and powers, guess what? You over principalities and powers as well. You have been restored dominion. And that's why the believer don't know the power that they have. You have power over Satan. You have power over demons. You have power over the unclean spirits. You have power over sickness. All you got to do is look at the way Jesus operated. He was operating in the authority and in the dominion of Adam. We have dominion. And so saints, we're going to get cranked up. We're going to get up in this word. Amen. And uh, we're going to continue to pierce the veil and talk about the prince of this world. We're going in, saints. This is a spiritual engagement. This is a spiritual encounter that we're doing. And the devil is mad. The devil is mad about what we're doing here. I'm telling you right now. Because a snake don't like to be seen. A snake don't like to be seen. And so we're going to get off in it. If you take your Bibles and turn with me to John chapter 14. We're going to focus in on verse 30. And we're going to get to the work. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know. Glory to God. What um, First Lady, you have anything else before we get to the work? Whew. Thank you, Father. The King is here. Thank you, Father. Woo! The King of Kings is in his holy temple. Woo! My God, my God, the crown is moving through your midst right now. Hallelujah. Inspecting his people. Inspecting his people. Inspecting his people. And he told me to, to tell you to mark that calendar, that date on your calendar. If you want a royal blessing. If you want a royal blessing. For the leaders who not under the decree. Some might say, I, I don't want to come to that. But if you want a royal blessing, you got to be here September 9th. Because it could be holding you back. Unawares. Unawares. So in John 1430, the Bible says, Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world coming and had nothing in me, and had nothing in me. Father, most high God, Yahweh, we thank you for your word and your goodness unto us. We pray right now, O King of kings and Lord of lords, Holy God, most high God, creator, healer, provider. You are the most high. Right now, we look to the hills from which come at our help. We fix our, our eyes on thee. Whom have we in heaven but you? And there's no one or nothing we desire on earth but thee. Come and inhabit the praises of your people, Israel. Walk amongst us. Let the shout of the king be amongst us this morning. And let the fragrances of your royal robes be in our nostrils in this place. We pray for presence this morning. And not just any presence, but your presence this morning. Fill this place, O okay. king. Fill this place up so much with your presence that anything contrary to you can't abide in this place. The devils have to flee. That the world has to flee. That the flesh has to be into subjection. Bring your entourage of angels with you to stay in guard around this perimeter, around the property line, around the boundaries around our hearts and bring us into eternity now as we time travel as we travel through space as we travel through distance as we travel God 
And I don't mean space like stars. I mean space like distance. God, in the name of Jesus, God, bring us in to eternity. Help us pierce the veil. Unzip, oh God, reality. And help us to see what's going on behind the lights, behind the smoke, behind the mirror. Show us, God, what you see in the heavens. Show us what's going on in the spiritual. And we just thank you for it, for revealing this matrix, O King. And Father, protect the minds of your people even now. We want to know it, but we don't want to be crazy. We want to know it, but we don't want to be, hallelujah, off the edge. Bless us to see it, to know it, but still be of a sound mind and sound body, God. And solid in our Bible and our Christian faith. Do this now. In Yahshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give y'all some praise up in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we want you to be spiritual and understand things that's going on in the spirit, but we still want you to be able to be of some earthly good as well. Amen. You meet some people, man, they so spiritual they can't get nothing done on earth. Amen. And so we want you to be spiritual, but also, amen, be highly effective on earth. Highly effective in business and everything else. We want you to be solid. Amen. And so I pray this, this balance uh, that God has put upon me and my family, upon you as well, to know what's going on in the heavens, but not to be creepy about it. Not to be weird about it, not to be ineffective on earth, amen, but to be highly effective, even more effective, because you know what's really going on behind the scenes. That's what we pray for you. That's what we pray for you. That's what we pray for you. The eyes of a hawk in the spirit, huh? where you can see things going on a mile away. A discernment to be able to smell, huh? Ooh. The enemy, a rat, amen? From a mile away. The ability to hear that serpent hissing. Ooh. From a mile away. Anybody hear me up in here? Huh? Huh? The prophetic, huh? The wisdom. You can know where you are and what you're supposed to be doing at all times for the glory of Almighty God. Come on, somebody give him some praise. Amen. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Worship team, great job. We appreciate y'all, brothers. Y'all are blessing. Hallelujah. Appreciate y'all. Hallelujah. Let's get to this work. Saints of God, we've been talking about the prince. Um, and we went into point one. Uh, Jesus was telling us that he was leaving, um, but he would not leave us comfortless, but that he would send us a comforter and that he would give us peace. He left us a command to love one another. Um, he told him, I won't talk with you too much. There's going to be some limitations on what I reveal from this moment on because the prince of this world is coming. And so we embarked upon a journey theologically talking about the prince. And uh, we said that this prince is archon in the Greek right here. It's a chief, it's a leader, but not of the good side, but of the bad side. We said that this was no other than Satan, than Lucifer. We called him by his old Hebrew archaic name, Halal. He was the anointed cherub, if you remember, one of the cherubim that sits on the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the throne room of God. He was the covering cherub. He was the one, amen, who was pretty much second in command, created second only to God, but that wasn't enough for him. He wanted the first spot. He didn't want to be a team player. He wanted to be the team. And so because of that, God said iniquity was found in you and he was cast down and he was cast down. But you got to understand the Luciferian way. They don't go quietly. All right. He took a third with him. 
A third of the angels were deceived into thinking that something was wrong with God who had created them and given them everything. And they went with someone who had given them absolutely nothing. Somebody that they didn't even know before God, hallelujah, had created them. But that's the deception of the demonic. That's the deception of the devil. And so a third of the holy angels who were with God left with Satan. And when they got on earth cast down, they began to cause trouble. We also said that Satan was not only with a third of his angels, but the spirits of the giants were also with him. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that to give you some proper systematic theology about it. Because you're pastored and studied in seminary with other pastors. And you got to understand that not everybody believed in the Nephilim. But as we look at the Bible and the Hebrew and then look at the, the, the whole context, and I'll show you today, there's no disagreeing that the Bible talks about a time when angels came down and did mix with men. To not see it would be a total negligence on spiritual leaders' part because it's what the Bible says and they know it. And then as we look at the other uh, uh, historical books, the books can corroborate. So to, to not teach it is because you don't have the faith to see that God is doing something miraculous, something spiritual. And that's what I see in the leaders that don't believe it. They not only don't believe the spiritual, they don't believe anything supernatural. Oh, my God. Huh? And so it's a faith issue. But we bring him back the church from the Gentiles to the Hebrews and we spiritual people. And when I present these spiritual things to you, you're going to understand because we spiritual people. We understand that there's some things that's going on that we can't see. But some of our leaders teach a Gentile word from a Gentile view, taking our Bible and looking at it from a Gentile way. No, 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 no. We got to come off of that and go back to a Hebrew Bible, interpret it to a Hebrew way. And we're going to find that the theology is right and the Bible is right. And so he was there, Satan, a third of the angels but also the spirits of the giants causing trouble. And we talked about this world and we went in about the world system last time, the riches, the pleasure, the positions, and the system being created by the prince, ran by lost men. Uh, the system accentuates all that God hates, negating all that God loves. We said that the system was wicked. The system of the world hates Jesus. It was designed to blind, blind men, to lead them away from God, to lead them away from the gospel. We said that before we're saved, we're all living under the power of the world, whether we know it or not. We all think we're all different, but we just march into the same beat of this worldly drama. It's not until we saved and Jesus delivers us from this world that we really become different. So Jesus, he died to deliver us from this world. Believers cannot love this world. And that's what the Bible tells us in 1 John. The world is not from the Father. Friendship with the world is, is to be an enemy of God. The world chokes the word. The word leads you away from God. God commands don't be conformed to the image of this world. To keep yourself unspotted from the world. To live godly in this present world. And at the end of the day to realize that the world and with all of its accoutrements is worthless. Because what would a man profit if he should gain the whole world but lose his soul? It's nothing but glitter and dust. It's nothing but trees painted to look fancy. Rocks accentuated with little uh, trinkets. It is nothing when compared with eternity. The whole goal of it is believer. To be blessed. To use this world as a tool. To have it but not to allow it to have you. That is the whole goal. That is the whole goal. And that is why, listen, we want to do some things on envy and covetousness and jealousy because those that have their attention focus on the things that other people have, you've been deceived. You've been deceived. You're changing the way you move. And you're disliking people for sand castles and mud balls. You've been deceived. And it's demonic. A demon is playing you. Getting you out of position. And out of the stream of blessing. That the Most High wants to give you. And the root of it. 
is because you do not understand that this world is worthless. Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. Learn how to use it, never to abuse it, but don't let it use you. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we went in, saints, just talking about this world, and I did a whole bunch of different things about how it's anti-God. We can't get into all of that. Um, you'll be able to, hallelujah, uh, look over it. Um, um, when we put it out online, you can watch it on YouTube. You can get it on the church app, amen. And me and uh, uh, Deacon Chavers was just talking. We may even put this in book for format, amen. Because if this thing making the devil mad like that, we're going to put it in the book, amen, to keep it to keep it out there, amen. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. So help us, God. So listen, this morning we're going to talk about the history of the world, the history of the world. And hopefully, uh, Deacon Nesliola will get to the uh, whole concept of Israel and the world and the Messiah and the world as well. And so we'll talk about those elements of the world, amen, and really get deep into how we play a part with this whole scheme. And so let's begin talking about the history of the world. And I'm going to do my best to stay as close as I can to my notes, but I will be moving a little quickly to get through all the information. Amen. And so as soon as man had fallen in the garden, all right, Satan went to work setting up and building this wicked system. Remember, man had authority, but he lost it to Satan because of sin. So Satan regains authority, but he goes to work to build a system to keep men down to keep women down to keep them enslaved while he sits on the throne of the earth being the God the prince of this world all right a few things he did his angels began to mix with mankind that's number one number two uh, they began to teach mankind mysteries things that men and women should not know Technology, And I'll show you all that in the scriptures. Hallelujah. And then thirdly, they began to set up governments. Groups of men coming together all on one accord, but not on one accord for God. All right. That's the three things they did. Let's look at the first one. They began to mix with mankind. We go to Genesis 1, 6 and 1 to get a full story of this in Genesis 6, 1. All right. The Bible says, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair, they were beautiful, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Now, the Bible right here is telling us that something different happened. Because since Genesis 1-1 uh, with Adam and Eve, men had always been taking wives. So why are they talking about men taking wives right here? No, 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 no. It's not men taking wives right here. This is a different thing. This is a different thing. That's why it's in the Bible right here. Because Adam took a wife and, 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 and Seth took a wife. And, and all the ones before this, they took wives. Cain took a wife. But right here, it's a different taking of a wife. It tells us, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born to them, that the sons of God. Stop right there. Pastor, what does this phrase mean? This phrase is super important to what we cover in this morning. See, because when we say the sons of God, you're thinking humans. But that's not all who were called the sons of God in our Bible. Particularly in the historical books, the early books. Pastor, who else were called the sons of God? The angels were called the sons of God. Prove it to me, Pastor. Well, I'll go to the first book, the oldest book in our Bible to prove it to you. Pastor, isn't Genesis the oldest book? No. Job is the oldest book in our Bible. And when we get to Job, chapter 1, verse 6, the Bible tells us about the sons of God. It says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. 
It wasn't no men in heaven at the throne room of God come and present themselves. It was the angels of God coming to present themselves. For they see the face of God every day. And among the angels of God who did come to present themselves was another angel. Satan came to present himself. So the sons of God, they're not men, they're angels. And when Satan came to present himself, that's the whole part in Job where, Job, where, where, where God asked Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Y'all remember that in the Bible? Huh? And they negotiate on how to tempt Job. And this happens twice. And the same title, sons of God, is used both times to describe when the angels come to visit the most high God. Now, for those theologians that won't agree that the sons of God in the Bible are angels, huh? especially in the Old Testament, they're just denying the truth. They're just denying what the Bible teach. Okay, do we have that? All right, do we have that? All right, do we have that? So let's go back to Genesis 6, okay? Genesis 6. It came to, came to pass when the, sons, when, when the men began to multiply on the face of the earth that daughters were born to him, and the sons of God, the angels, saw that the daughters of men were fair. They were beautiful. Them Hebrew women was walking out there, brother Carl. <laughs> Woo! I told first lady, I said, y'all not only gave men trouble in the garden, y'all gave angels trouble in heaven. <laughs> women was walking out there, brother Sam. The man just said, bro, they not built like that in heaven. They saw that they was beautiful. John, angels, angels, tempted by the women of God. And they took them wives of all which they chose. Now let me bring you to the historical book of Enoch. All right, let's look at it. Because while we won't put it on the same level of the Bible, we will use it as a historical context to corroborate the Bible. I told you that the sons of God meant, meant angels. Now let's go to Enoch and let's look at this. All right. As we look at Enoch 6.1, and it came to pass when the sons of men had increased, that in those days there were born to them fair and beautiful daughters. Huh? Go keep on going. And the what? And the what? And the what? And the angels, the sons of heaven, saw them and what? Desired them. And they said to one another, come, let us choose for ourselves wives for the children from the children of men and let us beget for ourselves what? Children. The boy said, we want a family. <laughs> boy saw them women and said, I'm about to settle down. You understand what I'm saying? So, so we see, we, if we go back to the Hebrew and we just compare scripture with scripture in our own Bible, Sola Scriptura, we see that it's angels. We know that it's angels. And I just pulled Job, but I could pull a dozen more scriptures. All right? We go to a historical book. Enoch tells us it's angels. Let's go to another historical book, the book of Jubilees. All right? Are we doing some work up in here? Well, yeah, I'm taking you to seminary. Let's go to class. Let's go to class. Let's study our Bible. Get out of the Gentile church. Our people always knew of the giants. Even when David fought one in the valley. But not everybody can believe like us, spiritual things. And in those same classes in seminary, listen, I was in there. They denying that, that Jonah was swallowed by a fish because they can't conceive it. Because they can't conceive it. But when I read my Bible and it say Jonah was swallowed by a fish, guess what Pastor Omar see? Oh, oh. <laughs> we ain't never had a problem believing spiritual things. That's their problem. <laughs> Woo! Are you with me here so far? All right. So as we go to the book of Jubilees, Jubilees tell us, all right, for owing, because to these three things came the flood upon the earth. God is about to tell us three reasons why the flood came upon earth. I'm just going to cover one so we can keep moving. All right. Namely, because owing to the fornication, wherein the watchers, the angels, 
against the law of their ordinances. That means that in creation, God say that one kind should be with another kind, that kind should not be mixing. All right. That the watchers against the law of the ordinances went a whoring after the daughters of men and took themselves wives of all which they chose. And they made the beginning of uncleanness, uncleanness. They started the uncleanliness in the earth, which made God flood the earth. Are y'all with me so far? We're going deep up in here, huh? Huh, Brother Chris, we're going deep. Listen, why? Because you got to study this thing right. All right? All right? And so we see, we just study in the history of the world. Now, it's not only because the angels mix with mankind, but after they mix, they begin to teach mankind. All right? All right? For that, we go back to Enoch. Enoch chapter 8. Because after they mix with them ladies, huh? They began to tell them ladies all their secrets. That's that pillow talk they say they call it. <laughs> Anybody hear me up in here? Look, the ladies laughing. The men ain't laughing. The ladies know. He tell you all his accounts, where his banks at, everything. That's that pillow talk. So in Enoch 8 and 1, the angels began to teach men. They first taught the ladies, but they're going to teach the earth, mankind. All kinds of things that men should not know. They're going to teach men to increase the wickedness on earth. And so in Enoch 8, 1, and Azazel, as one of the angels, taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates. Now, let me stop right there. Enoch tells us names of angels that uh, we don't get in the Bible. Um, and you got to be careful because some of those movies that's out there, they use the, the, the ancient names of the angels. Because it's only the believers that don't believe the historical books. But the ones that's writing the movies and behind the scenes, they know the historical books to be true. See, the historical books add commentary to our Bible. And when you read them, we understand why they don't want us to read them because they really paint a picture of what's really going on in the earth. And you can really discern who the people are when you read them books. Let me, let me, let me let's not digress. So Azazel taught men to make what? Swords, knives, shields, breastplates. Angels start teaching men to make weapons, y'all. Make weapons because angels been having swords in the heavens. Huh? You don't remember when, 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 when Balaam, the story of Balaam, how the angel stood there with his what? His sword. So they showed men on earth how to make earthly weapons that look like heavenly weapons. Swords, knives, shields, breastplates, and made known to them the metals of the earth. Iron, brass, gold, silver. Teaching them in the early days of Genesis. And the art of working with them. Bracelets, ornaments, what that is? Jewelry. Bling. You see what come with bling? You see what come with things and the value of it? Jealousies, envies. Men didn't know nothing about things like that. It's the world. It's an introduction of the world. You see? Now, some of y'all in here, oh, God, I'm going to take off my bracelets and my earrings. I'm not saying that. We might have got there but through time, but they got us that quick. Woo! All right? And the use of antimony. Pastor, what's antimony? Antimony is a semi-metal that's silvery in its metallic form. It's used... Watch this. I'm going to show you all something. It's used for medicine, cosmetics. Uh-huh. All you ladies with lipstick on. A little bit of blush. A little bit of powder. Y'all look so good because angels created eyeliner and eyeshadow. <laughs> hey! <laughs> now, I'm not up in here asking y'all to take it off. 
Everybody come up in here looking dry. Look. <laughs> we would have found it anyway, but they sped it up. <laughs> Anybody hear me up in here? I'm not saying that it ain't right or is it? No, no, no. It's immoral. how you use it. But he, they were teaching him right out looking at me close like, hold on, pastor. Huh? But, 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 but they taught him how to use that stuff quickly. Genesis 6, boy, right? Look, not too long after Adam, they wearing makeup. <laughs> they rocking it. Huh? Probably had weave over that too. I'm just joking. Listen. But that antimony, when you look at it closely, Wikipedia, is also used for electronic devices. Infrared detectors, semiconductors, microchips. <laughs> Braylon, we're going to blow your mind up in here. The angels taught men. The angels taught men. The angels taught men. You see? Come on, let's go back to it, Braylon. Huh? Antimony and the beautifying of eyelids. All kinds of costly stones, the diamonds. I see your tree. Look at the earrings over there. My God, my God, my God. Paparazzi. Because <laughs> what they were doing was the angels was taking what they knew of heaven and bringing it down to earth because heaven is beautiful. Heaven is streets of gold, rubies, sapphire. They were taking it and they were saying, listen, y'all, y'all living in the mud. Y'all living in the dirt. Let us show y'all how heaven look. Ooh. Huh? Huh? Coloring tinctures, huh? That's got to be. I just colored my beard, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it got to be dyes. Salty dog. The angels got me too. I ain't going back, though. I ain't going back. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. Enoch 2. Y'all having too much fun up here. Enoch 2. And there arose much godlessness. See, it was because of all of those things that they brought to earth, that they taught men, that men began to envy one another. They began to look at one another and say, you got this and you got that. All of it was just pieces of dirt and stone. And men began to have much godliness and they committed fornication. Sexual immorality went up. Because if they thought them ladies looked good before with them angels' high heel shoes they had on, <laughs> all right, let me, let me keep going. <laughs> huh? They committed fornication and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. And some Jaza taught enchantments, spells. See, you thinking the voodoo witch dogs and all that, that that's fake. It's spiritual too. It's spiritual too. That stuff is real. Oh, man, I done flipped through their books, man. And I would not advise those that's weak in the spirit to do so. That's real. And you're only protected from that if you're under the blood of Jesus. Anybody hear me up in here? You got to be under the blood. Ha! The angels taught men enchantments, root cuttings. Or Moses, the resolving of enchantments, how to break the spell. Because you can go to one witch doctor to get you a spell, and you can go to another one to break it. So they're out there throwing salt in their front, y'all. Huh, Shaq? We don't want them to come back to our house throwing salt on the phone. <laughs> Burying that man license in it. You know what I'm saying? Just, I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him. The angels. Huh? Keep on going in verse 3. Huh? And they taught astrology. Huh? What's your sign? What's my sign? <laughs> when they ask you what's your sign, tell them my sign is stop. <laughs> you understand? That's what my sign is. My, my sign is stop. <laughs> All right? They taught them astrology. Constellations. Men didn't know nothing about that. Knowledge of the clouds, because you can read some things about creation, about what's going on in the earth, by cloud patterns. The signs of the earth, the signs of the sun, the course of the moon, 
And as men perished, they cried, and their cry went up to heaven. How many people know that you could learn some things and know some things, and you can become better technologically and better in knowledge, but worse in God? Anybody hear me up in here? And that's where humanity finds itself today. We have the most connections worldwide, but we're the most loneliest. Woo! Anybody hear me up in here? And so the angels dropped something on us that we wasn't ready for, huh? And we gobbled it up like we gobbled up that first fruit from the tree of knowledge. We was getting it all from them. And so we're talking about the world system. Now, I shared this in Atlanta, amen. I just want to share this with y'all as well. But as we look at Enoch 16:2, we see that the angels shared some mysteries of heaven. But there are more mysteries that God didn't show them that he going to reveal in the last days. <laughs> that even to his people, I believe that the angels, the wrong angels taught technology. But God about to show his people some things on a whole nother level. Anybody hear me up in here? I'm talking about Wakanda forever. Anybody? <laughs> so, so, so. Just a little sidebar, in Enoch 16, this is God talking to the angels that went mixed with women. And he says, now is the watchers who have sent the Enoch to intercede for them who have been aforetime in heaven. Say to the angels, you have been in heaven. And you think you know some stuff because you done taught men some stuff. But all the mysteries had not been revealed to you, God tell them. God say, I got secrets that y'all don't even know. Because the secret things belong to the Lord. You think that they got mysteries that, that you done showed them everything? Nah, I got stuff, baby, that's going to blow earth mine. Oh, God keeping a stash like Minister Phil. He's saving the best for last, huh? 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 My God, my God, my God. He says, listen, he says, and all the mysteries had not yet been revealed. And you knew worthless mysteries. So all the stuff that we think is big time and all that, God said, that's worthless. God said, I got stuff I'm going to reveal to my people in the last day. You think you know some stuff? So Hebrews, get ready for inventions. Get ready for innovation. Get ready for that God to open your mind to a whole new level. Amen. Hallelujah. Huh, Brother Carl? Yo, did y'all know that Brother Carl is an inventor? No formal schooling. Brother Carl, what grade you went up to? Sixth grade. They got people calling Brother Carl for inventions that he making. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Listen, you got to get ready to receive the miraculous from God. See, some of y'all never even thought about inventing something. And now you're thinking, you say, hmm. But it's as easy as looking at a thing and saying, this don't work like it should work. You know? And in your field, in your profession, or even just anything, just look at a thing and say, God, give me innovation. Give me inventions. And so right now, in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, I agree with the people of God that's in this room and all over the country, all over the world. God, the angels taught worthless mysteries. We ready for the real mysteries of heaven. Give us inventions. Give us innovation. Give us witty inventions, God. And we pray in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach that the inventions sell, that you bless your people, God, that they be millionaires, billionaires, trillionaires, God, and they don't forget about your cause and your house. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout amen. Woo! God, get you to invent some things, amen? Because he shared with the angels some things, but not everything. All right, he said they had worthless mysteries huh all right let's keep on going y'all hallelujah um and so we see that the angels went to work they mixed with women they began to teach things all right and 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 this is the reason why god flooded the earth as we go back to genesis 6 as you watch me i'm moving between historical books and bible and i'm making sure to be very careful to show you that these things line up with the bible because you got naysayers, critics, and, 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 and haters who, they're not even educated in the scriptures. But they want to talk about it. You see what I'm saying? 
And so I just, I just, I just want to show you how all these things line up. All right? All right? Hallelujah. And so as we get to Genesis 6 and we look at, let's see, let's see, go to verse 5. Go to verse 5, 6, 5. Huh? Hallelujah. And this is right before the flood, if y'all can get me there. Glory to God. It says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth. That's because of all of the influx of technology and, uh, I'm, I'm, and makeup and weave and high heels. Things just went crazy, man. It, just, it was too early. It was too early for that. See, now we can handle it. It was too early for that. All right? And saw the wickedness was great of uh, man on earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Verse 6. Huh? And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved his heart. Do I have more? Verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy a man who I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. All right. Give me another one if you have one. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, I want you to go back to like 6, 3, 4, uh, 6, 3 or 4. Let's go back. We're doing some work. Let's go back. All right, 6-3. Go to 6-4. And there were giants in the earth. Stay right there. I just told you about the mixing. All right? Now, you can't mix one kind with another kind without having some deformities. God said them children didn't come out right. When the angels and the men mixed, there were giants in the earth. Giants. That word giant is nef Nephilim. Somebody say Nephilim. All right. And also after that, when the sons of God, the angels, laid with the daughters of men and they bare children of them, the same became mighty men of old, men of renown. They was born different than regular men. They were giants. When we read the historical books, some were born as men, but some were born with great deformities and looked like animals and men mixed up all together. All right? Because as you study angels, some of the angels' manifestations were a face like a lion, a face like... You understand what I'm saying? You see? And some of them look like that. Can I blow your mind for a second? Huh? All right. You know, they be saying that those dinosaur bones are like six million years old, six billion years old. Some theologians believe that they're just trying to hide the fact that some of those giant bones are the bones of the giants. <laughs> they could tell you anything. They find a watch on the ground, they'd be like, oh, it's six billion years old. Boy, stop tripping, boy. Stop tripping. Are you doing carbon dating to corroborate that? No, you don't. You don't. We just believe it. That thing might just be 5,000 years old. And they say a cataclysmic event happened that killed all the dinosaurs. It was a meteor that hit the earth and changed the environment. Yeah, something hit the earth. His name is Yahweh. You understand what I'm saying? And a worldwide event did kill, did kill the, the dinosaurs. It's called the Noahic Flood. <laughs> he drowned them all. All right? All right? And what they don't tell you, you can go and look that up. It's not just bones of animals and reptiles and stuff like that. <laughs> they also find other bones. Bones that look like more like us. Anybody ever heard that, that before? All right. It's in newspaper clippings in the 1800s. Large men. Large men. You say, Pastor, I don't believe that. Then you don't believe the Bible. Because Goliath was a large man. Anybody hear me up in here? Goliath was a large man. In fact, the giant of the Philistines. You see? Big brother, that's too deep for you? Big brother, like, nah, you can go deeper. 
Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So the angels uh, mixed with men. They showed men great wickedness. Huh? And the next thing they did, they began to implement governments and kingdoms. Because God flooded the earth. The angel said, we can't, we can't let the Most High just kill them like that. And so they began to build kingdoms and governments of men gathering together with one heart. These kingdoms were not built on God, but they were built on false gods, on idols, on sin, and on disobedience. This is the beginning of what we call the world system. I'm giving you the history of it. All right? The kingdoms set up that were most disobedient to God, most demonic, most rogue, received angelic help. <laughs> the ones that was most rogue, most demonic, most sinful, receive angelic help. Can I tell you that the same thing going on today? <laughs> the ones that blaspheme the most, the ones that take prayer out the most, the ones that abort the most babies, the ones that allow homosexuality to run rampant. Anybody that's doing anything that's against the uh, auspices of Almighty God, they get the most angelic help. That's why they're doing what they do. That's why they're doing what they do. You say, Pastor, I don't believe that angels help governments. then you don't believe your Bible. Because in Daniel, chapter 10, verse 5, Daniel is on a fast. This is where we get the concept of a Daniel fast. He's fasting bunch for 21 days. He's staying away from that meat. Huh? He on a Daniel fast, and he's fasting because he wants answers from the Most High God. And sometimes God's not going to give you answers until you put a fast on it. And so Daniel said, listen, I need to know when our people are getting out of Babylon, God, because the time is up. We should be out of here by now. God, what is going on? Daniel put a fast on it. Miss Kim, you know. And when he fasted, look at uh, Daniel 10. Then I lifted up my eyes and look and behold a certain man clothed in linen whose loins, his waist, was girded with fine gold. That's how they dress in heaven. They wear that bling in heaven. Boy had a gold belt on like WWE or something. That boy had a wrestling belt on. <laughs> Walk up in there. We still trying to get the hang of that. You know what I'm saying? Walk in with a, with a gold. And Daniel said it was gold or ufaz. Huh? Daniel said it was that good gold. <laughs> Not that gold from Ville Platte. It was that good gold. <laughs> Not that gold in the North Gate Mall. It was that. <laughs> Woo! That stuff don't turn. That ball was clean, Daniel said. In linen. His body also was like barrel. If you don't know what barrel is, barrel is a dark stone. His body was a barrel. His face as the appearance of lightning, his eyes as lamps of fire, his arms and his feet like the color of polished brass. Ooh, that's right, Kent. Black angels. Hey, my God, my God, my God. Hey! And if you ask me, I think they got angels of every persuasion, you know. That's how God operates. So he come out there, black angel. You know, who, what, other, what other kind of angel going to have a big gold belt on? <laughs> Boy, walk up in there. <laughs> Marshall, you laughing, Marshall? You know. All right. All right. And the voice of his words were like the voice of a multitude. So Daniel sees an angel while he's on his fast. Verse 12, we dealing with this issue of do angels assist governments of men? All right. Then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel. From the first day that thou saidest, thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself and to fast before thy God, 
Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Now stop right there. God told Daniel, told the angel to tell Daniel, you did a 21-day fast. But the first day of the fast, God heard you. Hey, anybody hear me up in here? He heard you from the first day, and he sent me from the first day. I was on my way from the first day of your fast. That's how powerful a fast is. It moves heaven, and heaven moves the angels, huh, when you fast. My God. The angels say from the first day you decided to understand and chasten yourself with this fast, God heard you, and I am come for thy words. As we move to 10, 13, hallelujah, he says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia. All right. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. The angel is saying the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. Now, could a, could a man withstand an angel? There's another prince over Persia who was withholding the angel from coming to Daniel. Daniel said, they won on the fast. I was on my way, but I got held up because there was some, some scuffling going on in heaven. Angel said, I had to take care of some business. <laughs> you see? Because at this time, Daniel is in Persia. He's in the empire of Persia, which is controlling Babylon at that time. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days they was duking it out. And the angel said, boy, I ain't done yet, boy, I ain't done. <laughs> the prince of Persia said, you tired yet? That boy said, I could do this all day, boy, what's happening? God sent me to Daniel, I'm going to get to Daniel. Okay. I'm excited, but let me, let, me, let me just stop right there. Angels help governments. They help the kingdoms of men. God was sending an angel to Daniel to give him a revelation of when our people was going to be moving out of Babylon, which was controlled by Persia at the time, because it went from Babylon to Persia, Medes. But this prince over the kingdom of Persia, withstood this angel. And so that angel, Isaac, had to call for backup. You know how it go, baby. <laughs> Woo! When it's getting too much, hallelujah, we got to call for backup. All right? All right? Yeah, yeah, what a wolf pack at. What a wolf pack at. <laughs> Sometimes you got to call for backup in this, in this mug. He said, but lo, huh? I can see him, they jumping him. He said, but lo, Michael, that's, that's our dog again. Michael said, I'm about it. I'm on site. I'm ready to do this, Michael said, at any time. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes. Now, we know the prince of the kingdom of Persia is an angel because he said, Michael, one of the chief princes. Are we breaking some scripture now? He came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. He came to help me while I remained there with the kings of Persia. Michael came break up the deadlock. Michael came up in there and said, y'all going to lose my ball right now. Or it's going to be trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, look at Michael. They say, we don't want no more of you, Michael. You done cast us out already. He may pass. All right. Angels help kingdoms. Really over every nation. There's an angel assigned by the adversary. Whether it's Great Britain, the United States. Is spiritual wickedness in high places. Is this too deep for y'all? And the ones the most wicked. Get the most help. Get the most assistance. That's just the way the adversary operate. Because the people who walk the holiest get the most assistance from God. 
But in the world system, the most ratchet get the assistance from the adversary. Now, as an aside, let me show you who Michael, you see, you see, all nations have an angel. Let me show you who Michael is the angel of. As we look at Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, prince which standeth for who? For the children of thy people. They talking to Daniel again. And they saying, Daniel, in the last days, Michael the angel going to stand back up. And he is the great prince which standeth, Daniel, for your people. Every nation got an angel assigned to it. And Michael is the angel of the Hebrews. The one that cast that devil out and the third that kicked him out. We got the most on-site angel. That's why we hood the way we hood. Michael like, huh, bro? Now, don't start praying to Michael and you got a Michael tattoo on your neck. Don't start all that. No angel worship. We are sons of the most high God, daughters of the most high God. If you need Michael, call his boss. If you need Michael, call his boss. You got to follow the correct protocol. You'd be like, Lord, I need Michael at uh, 200 Penhook Road. Uh, we need... We need a breakthrough right away. <laughs> Got some devils cutting up. <laughs> Send Michael and his boys. Angels are over nations. Break it down, Pastor. Angels are over cities. Devils are over cities. Strongholds. As we travel into different places, we know that different cities have different strongholds. Different sins that's particular to different areas. Families have different angels assigned to them. Devils that's been with your family since your grandpa got off the slave ship. Great, great, great grandpa. We call it generational bondage, but if we had to talk about it with angelology, there's some spirits that's trying to bring you back to the same place where your grandpa was. You think that drunkenness is not spiritual, but it's spiritual. You think that drug dealing is not spiritual, but it's spiritual. That gambling is not spiritual, but it's spiritual. That fornication and sleeping around, it ain't spiritual, but it's spiritual. You see, the enemy is highly organized. His army is over nations, over cities, over families, over people. Highly organized, a mixture of angels and the spirits of the giants. You see? And God tells us that we have the same thing on the good side. Because the children of God, their angels see the face of God every day, Jesus says. Not only is Michael the angel over our people, but every single one of you have a guardian angel that reports to God of how you're doing and what's going on in your life. You got to read your Bible and understand that every single one of you, every single one of you, the Bible says, reporting to God every day of how you doing. You see? You see? Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor, come back to it. We're talking about the world. And we're talking about the history of it. And this spiritual, angelic war that's going on in the heavens that we can't see. And we're talking about how this world system got started and our angels, which the Bible defines as principalities, support nations that do 
the most wrong. Huh? And let me tell you, America get great support from the angelic realm. Great support for being the number one drug pusher, wall pusher. For doing dirt to our people. Some things you do boost you up on the chart. Some things that God hate the most boost you up on the chart. Man, y'all don't want me to go there, man. You don't want me to go there. When you kill the people of God, lynch them on trees or shoot them in the streets. Yeah, the more you burn God up, the more angelic help you get from the other side. Aborting them babies, like I said. Huh? Fighting for men to be women and women to be men. Changing the image of God and, 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 and legalizing that, making that a law. Teaching that to children in high school and middle school and elementary. And you want to know why we the superpower of the world? The most wicked get the most Luciferian help. You know what they call America overseas? The great Satan. <laughs> Which angel is America's angel? You see? You see? Is this too deep for some of y'all? All right? All right? Now listen, be solid, yeah. Still go to work tomorrow. <laughs> still pay your bills, still make a lot of money, still be upstanding citizen. You know you can know things and not be crazy. Do I walk around like I'm thinking about this all day? No. So let's be solid. Let's be solid. And for God's sake, don't be going tell everybody this. You up in a you up in a beauty, you know, as a L and, and, and Samaj. You saying it all wrong. It's a, Samaj and, and, and R. Kelly and Brandy, them angels. You getting it all wrong. Cause them angels came down and they taught R. Kelly about that 12 plate. And when after that 12 plate, the angels did a little bump of ground with the with the sons and daughters of men. I don't want you saying all that. I'm trying to teach you so you can know what's going on. But don't you go out there and mess everything up. And Sadie was a part of the whole thing. Sadie, sweet Sadie, was a part of the whole thing. These Hebrews, boy. Get it in your system. Study it. Learn it. Become a professional with it before you open your mouth about it. All right? All right? All right? So you won't be weird. <laughs> be solid. All right. So these angels, man, and, and it's all Bible. It's all Bible. The prince of the kingdom of Persia. Mm. My God, principalities over nations. Huh? And, 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 and most higher upper echelon preachers and teachers. Billy Graham knew this. You, and when he talked about it in his book, Angels and Devil. Listen, all you got to do is read Billy Graham. Billy Graham will tell you this. It's a spiritual battle going on. All right. And so as we go back to the world, the, the first real national government that the angels prop up is a city, a government, a nation, a group of people that we call Babel. Babel. Angelic hell. Angelic hell. And in Genesis 11, 4, we have Babel started by a person by the name of Nimrod. All right. And what the angels do, they they just love to burn God up. So they make men in their world, world system worship things other than God. So they set up idols or they make men gods. Just as a side, before we go to Babel, first Corinthians 10, 19 and 20 tell us what idols really are. How they worship in all those false gods? It tells us what those really are. What, what say I then? That an idol is anything or what? Which is often a sacrifice to idols is anything. 1020. 
But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. When they set up these little idols for people to worship, they was really worshiping the devils. The unclean spirits, the fallen angels themselves. So when they would set up these whole cities for Athena and, and, and Jupiter and Zeus and all that, listen, listen, they was really seeing supernatural things. But it wasn't supernatural things from God. It was supernatural things from the other side. <laughs> Y'all okay? Do we need counseling after this service? <laughs> I'd be so scared to go too deep with him, Sean. You hear me, sister in law? You see? But they got to understand the spiritual, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Grant is loving this, man. So it's really devils that they worship him when they worship them idols totem poles and little things. It's demons behind that. You know? So in Genesis 11, 4, Nimrod, all right, I'm, I'm good on time. And they said, Babel, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. That's Babel. And we know the story of Babel. We know how God uh, destroyed that thing and scattered everybody. But once again, the Bible gives us a little short excerpt of a few verses. But let's go to the historical books and find out what was really going on at Babel. All right. As we look at Jasher, the book of Jasher, which the Bible quotes in cites. Huh? Huh? Jasher 9 and 25 and the building of the tower was unto them a transgression and a sin. God saw that they wasn't just building a big building or he'd be knocking buildings down in New York right now. It was the heart behind the building that they was building. They was building it for sin. And they began to build it. And while they were building it against the Lord God of heaven, you see, a flood had just happened. And them people say, we ain't going to let him flood and kill us again. We're going to build us a tower so that if it flood again, we're going to just run to the top. <laughs> you know how them Negroes do that. We're just going to run to the top. So let's keep living in wickedness. Let's keep doing whatever we got to do. Let's keep our relationship with fallen angels. If he, if he flooded again, we're going to just run to the top. They was building it in complete rebellion against the most high God. You see? They were, they were building it against the Lord God of heaven. They imagined into their hearts to war against him and ascend to heaven. That's the second thing. They not only wanted to build it to get away from the flood, but they were building it to try to reach heaven so that they can go and fight God. Well, that's some fools, huh? <laughs> but the last person you want to see is God. <laughs> you don't build nothing to get to God. <laughs> you better build something to get away from him. What is wrong with y'all? But it's all demonically induced. It's all devilish, devilishly propagated. Because really, this is what Satan wants to do. The, the nations are helped by Satan, but they do Satan's bidding. God, have mercy. 9.26 and all these people and all the families divided themselves into three parts. The first said, we will ascend into heaven and fight against him. Does that sound familiar? The second said, we will ascend into heaven and place our own gods there and serve them. Who did I just tell you that gods really were? The devils, the demons. They say they're going to ascend to heaven and put the devils in God's place. Who's the power behind these nations? And third part said, we will ascend to heaven and smite him with bows and spears. Boy, y'all tripping, boy. Or <laughs> bringing up an old crossbow or old, you know, and a spear. You don't bring no knife to no gunfight. And you don't bring no spear to no God fight. 
You know? That's what Babel was really about. A city, a nation, a group of people assisted by the enemy, but had the enemy's will, his opinion, his, 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 his styles, his, his trends. It, 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 oh God, it embodied who the devil was. Babel. David Gusick, one of the theologians, says that Babel was the first example of the world in the Bible. The first example of the world in the Bible. A human society united in rebellion against God. That's the world system. That's the world system. That is the world system. Somebody give God some glory. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Now, I know some of you done heard about Babel like that before, but how many never heard about the Tower of Babel like that before? How they was, how, and reading it from the book of Jash, how many was your first time just hearing that like that? Yeah, yeah, that's Nimrod. That's, that's Babel. That's the history of the world. Now, what God did in Genesis 11, 7, y'all still up out there? Because listen, I'm not preaching to get you excited, no. I'm preaching to teach you something. All right? All right? So in Genesis 11, 7, we just saw the flood. Now we're about to see what he do with Babel. God said, go to. Let us, the Godhead, go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. You see, God said he could have burned it. He could have flooded he said, I'm just, going, I'm just going to make them fools not understand each other. And so the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. And so they wake up one morning, and they talk in English. And they say, man, grab me that brick. And, that, and, that, and, 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 and the other dude said, qu'est-ce que c'est? You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and one over there, he said, he said, grab me that shovel. You know what I'm saying? And, he, and the other one, he, he, he's speaking Spanish. I don't know what to say in Spanish. Sergio, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. So he said something in Spanish. You know what I'm saying? And he talked to his another boy that he worked with every day. And he talking Chinese. <laughs> and when he asked for a hammer, he handed him a pipe wrench. And when he asked for a pipe wrench, he handed him a brick. And so it was confusion. And they left building the tower. And that first concentrated of a world system demonically propped up, demonically ran, and demonically influenced in thought, in principles, and everything else, it ended at that spot. But what happened was it didn't end. They took Babel and they were scattered. But everywhere each group went, they took the roots of Babel with them. <sighs> so the world system of Babel went to Mexico, went to South America, went to North America, went to Canada, it went to France, it went to Spain, it went to Africa, it went to South Africa, it went to China. Babel didn't end, it just spread. It just spread. That's why you got pyramids in Egypt and pyramids in Central America and South America. Different places, same devils. <laughs> Is this too much for y'all? That's why in every civilization, the names of the devils change. From Asterisk to Diana, from Nimrod to Balaam to Jupiter to Zeus, the names change, but the basic premise of these false deities all remain the same. Zeus and Rome. Huh? 
Jupiter in Greece. <laughs> Babel just spread. It just spread. It just spread. So what God did was scatter the trouble. They say one of the worst things you can do to like a, a chemical fire is to throw water on it. If you ever saw a fire just sit on gas, you come up in there and you throw that, that gas. Just <laughs> That's what the world system did. And it scattered and it grew. And they began to continue to worship these idols, but just in different languages. And so God had another plan. Israel. Israel. Let's move on to sub point C. Let's talk about Israel and the world. All right. Whew. I feel like this is a conference word right here. I felt like this is a word for people around the country that don't mind going deep and don't mind using their brains and intellect. Swim with me here. Swim with me here. Because when you understand this, you're not going to be deceived by the world when you understand the history of it. You're going to know that this is just, it's nothing. Tricks of angels. Y'all saw that these demonic world governments spread from Babel. Even Babylon itself was hatched from Babel, hence the name Babel, Babylon. You get to Revelations, it says Babylon, the great, the mother of all idols and idolatry and false governments. This was the seed right here. And as it spread and all the other nations caught root of these demonic systems, God said, you know what? Hallelujah. The devil has got the world under lock and key. He's got all the other nations worshiping him through idols and idolatry. God said, you know what? I'm going to create myself a nation. I'm going to make myself a people that's going to worship me. Though the whole world is in idolatry. Though the whole world is under Satan's grip. Though the whole world want to storm heaven and kill me. I will make me one nation that loves me. That serves me. One nation out of a whole earth of idolaters and heathens. God said, I'm going to make me a nation. So he called Abraham out of a place called Ur. Of the Chaldeans. He called Abraham at the very spot where Babylon was. And he called him and he said, come and I'm going to give you a land that you've never seen before. And from Abraham being obedient to God, the promise went from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob. Jacob had his 12 sons. huh? God said, I'm going to bring you to a place called Egypt. Egypt was different in location from Babel, but it was the same demonic gods. And Egypt, huh, took God's people, Israel, and put them in an iron furnace. Because you're going to be blessed by the enemy as you do the things that God hate. So they put us in slavery. They begin to abort our babies, throwing them in the river. Oh, don't you see something that's kind of weird, huh? Huh? They begin to abort our babies, throwing them in the river, huh? They doing all manner of wickedness to us. But what the devil thought would break us only made us the nation that God would have us to be. Woo! So God birthed a nation in Egypt. And when it was time for us, we were strong enough. We knew we, we, we was going to meet our God finally. God sent a man named Moses and he went to Pharaoh and he said, let my people go. God said, hey, God. Pharaoh ain't never heard of the Most High because the world only know the enemy and the false God. And so Pharaoh said, who is God that I should listen to him? Because God is making a new arrival on the scene. The prince of the power of the world got the whole world and every nation on lock and key. Pharaoh said, I don't even know this God that you're talking about. Who is God that I should, that I should, that I should serve him? Huh? Huh? Moses didn't even know him like that. Moses said, who shall I say sent me? Huh? God had to reintroduce himself to the earth because the enemy had it on lock and key. You see, God had to say, I am that I am. 
Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of your fathers that you don't forgot. God brought that nation out of Egypt, huh? And he put the world on notice. He put them on notice because the strongest nation at that time, propped up by the devil, propped up by giant, evil, wicked, unclean spirits, propped up by sin and disobedience, it was the superpower of the world. But God, huh, with a ragtag people who didn't even know him too well, a slave people, a people not educated, huh, a people that was all full of confusion, God took that people, marched out of Egypt, brought that nation down, opened up a sea, rained bread from heaven, brought... Oh man, y'all ain't. Woo! And while all the other nations had their demons and devils and rogue angels over them, the God of the angels marched through with the people. Marched through with the people. Marched through with the people. And the angels were trembling. The nations were trembling. Because the God of all creation had chosen nation to put his name on. Rahab heard about it and said, well, Jericho don't stand a chance. <laughs> We've heard that God has given y'all all this land. <sighs> I'm here to help y'all. I'm going to hide y'all. I'm going to do whatever I can. I want to be with y'all, not against y'all. Because y'all serve the true and living God. God chose to put his name on a people. Hey! While all the world was under the power, the prince of the power of the air. Huh? He brought them into that wilderness and gave them a covenant. He made an agreement with them. Huh? The devil has an agreement with his people. He got things that he want them to do to obey him, to boost up their credits and image with him. But God made a covenant with his people. And in Leviticus 18 and 1, he tells them, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, he says this, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord, your God. I'm your God. I belong to you and you belong to me and everybody can serve anybody else, but you're going to serve me. Woo, I'm your God. I'm your God. Verse 3, look what he say. He said, after the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein you dwell, shall ye not do. Don't worship what they worship. No golden calves, no rock, all that. All, and them brothers going back to the onks and all that. Don't do that. That's Egypt. That's e Don't go back to Egypt. I know you're pro-black and you want to pro-African, all that stuff like that. Listen to me, man. Listen to me. Don't go back to the gods of Egypt. Go back to the gods of Israel. Anybody hear me up in here? Don't be wearing no cross with no semicircle on it. That's, that's the Egyptian gods. You see, don't do that. Know what you're doing. Know what you're doing. Huh? Well, you say, Father, you, 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 say, you say, Pastor, that, that, that's the motherland. Huh? Huh? But we got a fatherland. Woo! We got a fatherland. And that's our home, Israel. That's our original home. And we serve the God of our fathers. You see? So you could be pro-black and pro-African and all that, but we don't go back to the gods of Egypt. He said, you're not going to do like them. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, the other nations, whether I'm bringing you, shall ye not do. You're not going to live like them. You're not going to do what they do. They're serving devils and demons. They under the power of the prince of this world. And you're not going to be like them because you belong to me. And God made a covenant with us there. And he said, if you do these things, just like if they do wickedness, they get blessed. The stock market go up just like when they do wickedness. You do good and watch me blow your socks off. Ooh, you serve me and watch me. Let me tell you something. And that's our people. You see, we try to run with them and do evil like them. Try to run around like them, and we don't get blessed like them. They running around cutting up, doing all kinds of stuff, and they getting blessed because they getting blessed by their God. You see, but us, when we do wrong, we're not under no blessing, we under a curse. You got to get what I'm trying to say, Israel. You want a different economy than the rest of the nations. 
When you do wrong, you curse. But when you do good, when you serve your God, when you praise him, when you lift him up, when you give unto God, when you give unto his call, that's when you are blessed. They can't understand it because that's not where they come from. We understand it because that's in our DNA. Hey, you ain't. Woo! The oracles of God rest and rule in your bloodstream. You his original people that he selected to be the alternative to a world dominated by the demonic. And that's what that's all about. And so he chose us, y'all, back in that day. The whole world would be a part of Satan's system except Israel. And God told Abraham in Genesis 12, 1, he said, I'm going to bless the world through you, Abraham. This one nation that I choose going to wind up blessing the whole world. In Genesis 12, 1, he says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of the country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Moving fast in verse 2, And I will make thee a great nation, huh? my nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And it's one thing to be blessed, huh? But when you get to the next level, you not only want to be blessed, but you want to be a blessing. Come on, somebody. Got to give God a shout of praise up in this place. And that's what he told Abraham. And I don't know. He says in, in verse 3, he says, you're going to be a blessing. He says, and I will bless them that bless thee. And I will curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now, Satan and his angels saw that because they listen to what God say closely. The devil know the scriptures. So they up in that Tweety and they looking at that, they saying, hmm, we think we know what he gonna do. He gonna evangelize the whole world with this one nation. This one nation is gonna transform the whole world into serving God. This one kingdom is going to spread from nation to nation until all the world is Israel and all the world is serving God. That must be what he means when he says he's going to bless the whole earth through Abraham's seed. So the devil develop a plan. He say, devils, all of y'all, in every location you at, in every city where you at, every family that you over, we ought to concentrate our forces on the people that's called Israel. Because we have to stop God from taking over the world that we are in possession of through this one people. We have to fight God by fighting this people. We have to fight him at every stage, at every step, wherever they are, you put them down, you bring them low, you persecute them, you, 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 you abuse them, you enslave them, you whip them, you don't educate them, you oppress them, you do not let them get up. Don't let God bless them. Because if they rise up to what God wants them to be, what he created them to be, all the nations will know that their God is stronger, greater, mightier than anything that's in the world. Anybody hearing me in this place? The devil, he had a plan to subdue a nation that was born with the purpose of serving God. So he enacted this plan. And as we came out of Egypt, we saw that every nation fought us tooth and nail. We just wanted to pass in their front yard and they say, no, nah, you ain't passing. By the way, we got a spear and a bow for you too. Because what was happening, see, 
was, was called in military terms proxy wars. A proxy war is when a greater nation, two greater nations fight, but they fight through smaller nations. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's how nations fight now. See, America fighting Russia, yeah. But it's fighting Russia through Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. America and Russia was just fighting in Syria. Huh? Because they were, America was supporting the rebels in Syria. Russia was supporting Assad, the king. It was a proxy war when two greater governments engage in battle through smaller forces. God's kingdom and Satan are fighting, but proxy wars. They're fighting through. God is fighting through Israel as we come in out the promised land, coming in the promised land. Satan is fighting through the Moabites. The Edomites, the Canaanites, he just fighting God's people. It's a battle, but it's a proxy war. Oh, my God, my God, my God. And when we obedient, we walking, and we cutting through them nations like nothing. The walls of Jericho coming down. <laughs> Anybody hear me up in here? The, the bees fighting against our enemies, chasing them, boy. Huh? Huh? We slaying giants with David. None can stop the people of God when they serve in God. And then Satan got smart. He said, wait, we really can't fight against God like that. He is sovereign. Our power comes from him. There's really no way we can stop Israel because if God be for them, who can be against them? So the devils had a meeting and they said, what are we going to do? I call this meeting to order. And they're throwing around ideas. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. The devil said, ah, I think what we need to do is have them fall out with God. If they fall out with God, we know. That God going to kick them out. Because we have been kicked out. <laughs> if we could get God to do them like he did us. Then they're not going to be much of nothing. Because the secret of their strength is holiness and obedience. And so all we have to do is make them unholy and disobedient. And the God that helped them will in turn hurt them. The God that was on their side will fight against them. We will give Superman his kryptonite. We will make the Hebrews sinners. And so a false prophet named Balaam stood up. And he taught Balak, the king of the Moabites, Something about the Hebrews is hidden in our Bible. But Jesus in the book of Revelation tells us what happened in Revelation chapter 2, verse 14. Jesus says, but I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. The doctrine of Balaam. What is the doctrine of Balaam? Who taught Balak, the king of Moab. To cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. We're going to make Israel do two things. We're going to make them, and I'm going I'm to I'm flip it. We're going to make them commit fornication. We know their weakness. The men like the ladies. And the ladies like the men's. We're going to make them commit fornication. And then we're going to get them into idolatry. Study with me. Press in. Press in right here. Because as I show you the world and I show you our purpose and I'm going to show you what the world did to us to get us off our purpose. So they taught the Moabites something about the Hebrew men. Go to Numbers 25.1. 
See, the Hebrew men got a lot of testosterone. That's why we run so fast and jump so high. That's why we fight so good and so violent. And yes, our women got testosterone too. That's why they, oof, baby. Ooh. And Anna, you still got that blood running through you, baby, because listen, our women know how to get that in a second. It's a strength, it's a heat that's on the inside of us. And that heat can be used for wrong. And Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. The king of Moab was told by Balaam, listen, we can get God to get mad at him. Show the men the Moabite women. And Israel men liked the Moabite women. They did. Israel men like all women. <laughs> Pastor, how you know that Israel like the Moabite women? Ruth, the Moabite. She was married to them Israelites, man. Even before Boaz, she had an Israelite husband. And Israel bowed there, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab, verse 2. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bow down to their gods. You see that word gods right there with the small g? God ain't got no problem with you being with somebody that's not of your race. But he got a real problem of you being with somebody that's not of your God. <laughs> yeah. He never had a problem with Rahab or Ruth. He had no problem with that. And even in here right now, we got mixed families. God ain't got no problem with that. Huh? But the problem is when you be unequally yoked with somebody that don't serve your God. That's the problem. That's the problem. That is the problem. And when you lay with somebody, the spirits connect. Soul ties. You leave with some of them and they leave with some of you. When Israel began to soul tie with Moab, they left with some Moabite ways. And all of a sudden, when Israel was just worshiping God, they began to sacrifice to the God of the Moabs after the fornication. That's why some of y'all men playing around with people that ain't godly. And you say, well, I got a drinking problem all of a sudden. Because that woman you laid with had a drinking problem. And why, why I'm on cocaine and doing drugs now? Because that woman you lay with was on cocaine and, and, and had a drug problem. So you think you can go run to Vegas and what, stay doing, what, what you do in Vegas, stay in Vegas. No, what you do in Vegas, come home with you because you got soul tied. Yeah, leave them street women alone, them harlots alone. Because when you lay with that, you take something with you. Their gods become your gods. And if a God is bisexual, then you be bisexual. If a God is cocaine or crack or heroin, you ain't never done a drug in your life, and now you won't do drugs. Well, you better watch where you lay, boy. And woman of God, the same thing apply to you. You better watch where you lay. Huh? You wasn't all over the place. You went to private school. But that, but that LC don't walk up in there. He done been everywhere. And you said, well, I guess just this once ain't going to hurt. Oh, yeah, it's going to hurt. Because this same running around ways is now on you. And all of a sudden, you went from church girl to worse girl. You said, well, how that happen? Because the gods of the people you lay with are the gods that you end up serving. So Israel committed fornication with Moab. The devil's plan came into being perfectly. They started sacrificing to idols. And guess who got mad at them? The Most High. And the power was gone. The victory was gone. 
They ended up in oppression, in slavery, from many nations, the Midianites, the Philistines, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Romans. They just went from slavery to slavery because every time they would raise up, the devil would hit them with some sin from the world and he would knock them right back down. And he told God, God, I know you move here with Israel. Checkmate. I got him. Because Israel is our sinners too. Israel is born in sin, shaping in iniquity too. They love the world too. They love the pleasures, the possessions of the world too. And they will never be what you will have them to be. They will never take back the world for you. Israel is fallen. It's fallen. And I have beat you again. But God had an ace in the hole. <laughs> God had an ace in the hole. God had an ace in the hole. Hey, my God, my God, my God. He had some up his sleeve. This is the last point we're going to talk about. I know we're getting it, baby. We're going to get out of here. It ain't football season yet. We're going to conclude and we're going to talk about the Messiah. Jesus and the world. Oh, we giving you, oh, we giving you some stuff right here. Miss Lou, Brother Eddie, we giving them some stuff up in here. We breaking it all down. You see? He thought he had it, y'all. He thought he had won. Then come the Messiah. If they all born in sin and they can't withstand the world, God say, I'm going to have one born of a virgin. Born holy, born without sin. Galatians 4, 4 tells us when the devil thought he won, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. What did he come to do? To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Come on, somebody give God some praise. The nation was not the answer. Satan made a miscalculation. He thought that our nation would convert the world to God. But that, that's not what God was up, up to. You see, God would not convert the world through a nation. He would convert the world through a man. Israel was not the answer. But the one that Israel would give birth to would be the answer. Hey! Come on, let me reveal to you the mysteries of heaven. You see? You see? Yahshua would be the one. So you could oppress the nation. You could put the nation in slavery. You can beat the nation down in sin. But it wouldn't stop God. For while they were in sin, while they were oppressed, while they were beaten down, God called a virgin by the name of Mary. And the angel came down and told her, the holy child that shall be born of thee shall be called the son of God. My God, my God, my God. Woo! When the devil thought that all was lost, that he had won right under his nose while Israel was the lowest, the brokest. The most in slavery. The nation gave birth to the Messiah. The one. The one. The one. You see? See, Jesus would come back and take back what Adam lost in the garden. All right? All right? He would take dominion back over the whole earth. You see, they thought, so when he got here, they was like confused. They were like, oh, my goodness. Oh, goodness. It, it's him. <laughs> they remember him from heaven. It's him. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. We had the plan wrong. He's going to do it through the Messiah. They gathered again. They said, okay, what you think he's going to do? All right. He is the king of kings. So what he's going to do is he's going to become king of Israel. 
He's going to bring Israel back to his glory. All right. She's going to reign again like the times of David and Solomon. And, and, and when, she, when he reigns again, when she is back to her full glory, then they will con convert the other nations as they see the Messiah reign over Israel. They will convert the nation still through this nation as Messiah sits as king. They got it wrong again. <laughs> They got it wrong again. So they saying, all we got to do is stop him from being king. And we going to win. All we got to do is, is, is make sure that his own people hate him. All we got to do is stoke that old sin that we have in him. Back to it again. It was for envy that they delivered him to Pilate. Spirit of envy, run through the Hebrews one more time. The Messiah is here. He's doing miracles and raising the dead. Make the people jealous. Make the Pharisees and the Sadducees jealous. Make them envious of him. So that they can convince the people to yell, crucify him, crucify him. And when he's on that platform with Barabbas, huh? demons tell the people, Give us Barabbas. We have no king but Caesar. So the devils orchestrated the whole thing to keep Jesus from being king of Israel. They crucified him to stop him from ushering in the messianic kingdom. All right. They did the whole thing from whispering to Judas, entering into Judah's heart. During the last supper, the Bible said when he dipped his bread, what? Satan jumped in him. They orchestrated the whole thing on a spiritual level, and Jesus saw it all. Watched it. But can I tell you that God played with his cards close? <laughs> if you ever saw First Lady play cards, she don't do it too much no more, you know what I'm saying? Because you see, they got a principality over households. <laughs> when First Lady play cards... We, I don't care what it is. It could be Uno. She hold her cards so close. And me, I hold my cards like this. I'm up in there. She like, hide your hand. I'm like, how can you see my hand? You're in front of me. How can you see my hand? So she hold her cards like that. Because, say, you know what I'm talking about, the holy car. My law. All right? But, you know, old things are passed away, but all things have become new. But when we play that pity pad at home, boy, she be... And still always beating me. I don't know how she do it. Lord have mercy. Listen, okay, okay, okay. Let's go back to. But God plays his hand close. He letting them do whatever they want. He letting them betray him. What you do, do quickly. He letting them stop them from making him king. He just, and they don't understand that. But they say we're going to stop him from being king. And guess what? We're going to kill him. We're going to kill him. You see? But what they didn't know, huh? They didn't know that he was going to die to win. They didn't know that through crucifixion, he would get the crown. They just didn't know that. In 1 Corinthians 2, 8 say, it say this, going back into the spiritual. They say, which none, come on, help me, Sambu, get that quickly. As quick as you can, push that button, click that mouse, come on, get it. Ah, we losing. All right, we got it. Which none of the princes, principalities, the angels, none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it. They would have not crucified the Lord of glory. They didn't know his plan, y'all. They didn't know his plan. He had that thing. <laughs> he played that thing close to his chest. They didn't know his plan. For had they knew it, they never would have crucified him. They thought that he was out just to return the kingdom to Israel. But he was out to return the dominion back to Adam. Hey, my God. 
my God. They thought he was just taking back the kingdom of Israel. No, he was going back to undo what the devil did in the very garden. He was going to hit him at the heart. He was the seed of the woman that would crush the serpent's head. He was the one. He was the one. How many people having church up in here this morning? How many people having church up in here this morning? Woo! Caught the devil by surprise. He up in that ring rope and dope in the devil, boy. Devil throwing combination. <laughs> God just taking it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all of a sudden, after they crucified him, ooh, the angel rolled back the stone. He got up again. He hit that devil with a wow, wow. Anybody hear me up in here? When he died on the cross, musicians, y'all come see me. I'm keeping the people long. But I know that during football season, we ain't going to better do this. We're going to have half the people in blue and white, half the people in black and gold. All right? Musicians, y'all come and see me. I'm, I, but, but, but here it is. When he died on the cross, all right, he saved us from our sins. The devils didn't know that. They weren't paying attention to the Levitical sacrificial system that the blood washes away sin. They weren't paying attention to that. You see, the reason why Adam lost his dominion is sin. You get rid of the sin, you can restore the dominion. Hey! So Christ, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, died to get rid of sin. When he got rid of sin, number two, he gave us back dominion. He gave us back dominion, meaning that Satan don't control us that's under the blood no more. He don't rule us no more. All right? He might have caused trouble, but he ain't a boss of us no more. Anybody hear me up in here? All right, all right. We have back dominion. How do we get back dominion? Well, Jesus has dominion. He says, all power has been given to me in heaven and in earth. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, 6, that when we get saved, we are raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This means that when you get saved, Jesus shares his throne with you. You are seated in the throne of Christ. You are the body of Christ. And since Jesus is over Satan, since Jesus is over principalities and powers, guess what? You over principalities and powers as well. You have been restored dominion. And that's why the believer don't know the power that they have. You have power over Satan. You have power over demons. You have power over the unclean spirits. You have power over sickness. All you got to do is look at the way Jesus operated. He was operating in the authority and in the dominion of Adam. We have dominion. Dominion was restored. Was restored was restored the weather has to obey Jesus the weather has to obey him the demons tremble at him he forgave us of our sins he restored the, the dominion he translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son according to Colossians 1 and 13 we are no longer part of this world system that Satan has orchestrated since Babel, spread all over the world, subdued our individual nation, beat us into conformity to it. But through Christ, still we rise. Ooh! In it, but not of it. We have been translated out of darkness into his marvelous light. And we have overcome the world. We can see it now clearly. We understand it now. We know who created it, who run it. 
We have taken the red pill of the cross of Christ, the blood of Jesus, and the world can't fool us no more. Anybody hear me up in here? Huh? Huh? I'm telling you, man, and I just, I just, I just taught in Atlanta just the other day that this world system is coming to an end. In the book of Revelation, it says a day is going to come where the angels of heaven going to rejoice. They're going to shout out, Babylon is fallen. It's fallen indeed. Woo, I got the chills just by saying it. Babylon is fallen. And I don't have time. I wish I had time. I went through it in Atlanta, but I don't have time here. But in Daniel 2, read about the vision of Nebuchadnezzar. And read about the world system with the gold head and the chest of silver and the bronze mid and the, and the legs of iron and the feet of clay. God was showing Daniel the world system throughout time. And he says in the end there's going to be a rock. A rock cut out of a mountain. A rock made not with hands. And this rock is going to smash the Babylonian image. It's going to hit it in the feet, meaning it's going to come in the last days. It's going to hit it in the feet. And all the kings of men are going to fall. And the Bible declares that the angels going to shout, the kingdoms of men have become the kingdom of our God. Somebody got to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. With a voice of triumph. Because on that day, Eden will be restored. Dominion will be restored. And Jesus will have conquered all. And what the devil was trying so hard to fight against, our Messiah shall reign in Jerusalem. And his people will be by his side reigning and ruling with him. His people, not only the Hebrews, the Israelites, amen, but his people from every nation, every tribe, and every tongue. We will say, Hosanna in the highest, for our God reigns. Will you stand with me as we worship our God for a second? While we praise him in advance for what is about to go down, somebody shout hallelujah to the most high God. Come on, give him praise up in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I never like to end, amen, without giving an opportunity for an altar call. This morning, amen, if you don't know if you're saved, amen, we're going to call for you. If you've been battling with the enemy in some kind of way, uh, mental, uh, uh, spiritual, physical, huh? If you've been battling some stronghold in your family, you see? If you've been going through some of that uh, covetousness, envy, whatever it is, we're going to exercise dominion this morning because Jesus gave us authority. Huh? And the authority comes because our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life in Heaven's Throne Room. Amen. And I want to tell you that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you is going to be condemned. This morning, listen, you could be saved, or if you're already saved, you can be encouraged. That I know the enemy is in the world, but greater is he who's within you than he that works within the world. Come on, give y'all some praise up in this place. Hallelujah! Ushers, ushers, open up the gates, people of God. Come to the altar if you feel led. Hallelujah! Come to the altar even now. Or if you just want to worship for what God done did in this service, come to this altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brian, do your thing while they come. Hallelujah. No weapon. No, no weapon. Formed against me. Hallelujah. Hey. He thought he won. He thought he won. It won't work. But it won't work. No Not a single one. It doesn't matter. He won't work. He won't work. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Come on, 
with somebody. Hey, he, won't he can't beat you. No weapon. If God be for you, who can be against you? singing already. I hear y'all. We can just stand by his word and, by his word, and he, will come through. he will come through. God will say, God will do, God will do what he said. What he said he That's what we just went over y'all. He said some things. He's bringing it down. He's bringing it down. Hey! He will come he will through. Come through. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. The devil can't win. All right, all right. We're going to pray, y'all. We're going to pray. Say, Most High God, thank you for the mysteries of heaven. Thank you for holding your cause close and thank you for fighting against the enemy of our souls Lord we admit we've sinned against you and we are so sorry but we believe in our Messiah who died on the cross was buried in the grave and rose the third day to give us victory dominion and salvation Lord save me and forgive me of all my sins give me the red pill of your blood so I can see the world for what it is so I can see the enemy and what he's doing and so I can build your kingdom with these hands and these feet all over the world use me God as your tool may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven in Jesus name come on give him a shout of praise hey no weapon no weapon no weapon no weapon hallelujah 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 no weapon hey no weapon no weapon Good morning. Good evening. Oh, it's good, good afternoon. afternoon. Now. We both wrong. <laughs> <laughs> good afternoon, y'all. People of God. How yes. y'all doing this evening? Or this afternoon? This afternoon. Yes. Welcome to another post show with the reflections on the word. Yes. Uh, of course, as always, Pastor Omar brought Woo. it again. again. He continued his message about the prince of this world, y'all. Yes. And that's this is so good to Whoa. know our enemy, to know our adversary. Right. Uh, he got deep. He gave us the history. He right. went all the way back to, to Nimrod and the tower yes. that they uh -huh. built and how he had to confuse the languages because our people just wanted to do their own thing and they yes. wanted to, to try to play God. And so right. we see how the enemy has progressed throughout the years. We see his hand in the past yes. and we see what he's doing now and he doesn't change up. Right. And so it was so good to hear Pastor kind of talk about it that. It was really good. Um, yeah. Man, it's amazing. If y'all enjoyed that word. 
put on the put on the line. This was great. This was yeah. for me. Yeah. I needed to hear that. On time word. On time word. Yeah. So right now we're here and we have someone with us today and she want to share a little bit about what she experienced and what she got out of this. So introduce yourself, ma'am. Um, Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Irma Durrell and I'm from Lafayette. All right, okay. Miss Irma. Irma. Great it's so have. good to have you up here. Yes. Thank so you. what's something you took away from past this word on this morning? What I took away this morning was that um, actually I was reading a book by um, Tony Evans. And okay. He actually speaks about the spiritual battles and how the. Um, Thank you, voice. And how the enemy, um, how he fights. And he um, almost like a coach where he actually uh, watches your, um, your plays before he even does anything in your life. Wow. So when Pastor was speaking on it, I'm like, it was revelation for me because I was actually reading about it and he actually expounded more on it. Wow. So it gave me a lot of wisdom about how the enemy fights and we're not fighting against uh, the physical. We're fighting yeah. against spiritual. Yeah. That's right. That's the battle. The battle That's is good. spiritually, man, definitely. So you said he's like the, he, the coach, you said? He... No, I say it's like a coach. Whenever they're going to uh, play a game, mm -hmm. they pretty much watch the opponent's yeah, they plays. Study. They yes. study their yes, plays definitely. to see how they're playing. Yes. So what he does, he studies our plays before he does anything. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Now look, that's that's good because I think it's very important for us to not be ignorant of his devices. Yeah. Because this enemy, he comes with the same motive, but but his he's trying to switch it up. Like the new generation we in right now, right? Mm -hmm. It's all the same thing, but he's covering it up with a little glitter or a little. Yeah. Yes. But he, his goal is it's like Pastor said one time. It's like a razor inside a tussie roll. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow. You eating it, but at the same time, his goal is to really mm -hmm. reel you in. Yeah. He has the same goal in mind. Yeah. Yes. And so that's but I, good. I just thank God for Pastor because um, I've been here about seven years and I've gained so much wow. wisdom. Yes. And my, fam my favorite um, scripture is we perish from a lack of knowledge. Mm. And because he's given us wisdom, a lot of us are being awoke by what's yes. going on in the world. Right. Yeah. We, we know how to fight. We know what to look forward to. Right. We can recognize the enemy. And his schemes and what he's trying to do, yeah. especially to our people. You know what I'm saying? How he really trying to yes. get us to fight each other, mm -hmm. hate each other. Yeah. Because if he can get us to do that, we lose focus on worshiping him and right. being who he called us to be. Right. right. You're right. So that's a good. That's a great word. So many points Pastor had today. Yes. Man. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I gotta go back and listen to this again. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. A lot that of wisdom. Good. That, oh, that's a so good much. illustration for us to leave off on how the enemy. You know, he's watching. Like he's not mm -hmm. just waiting for by chance right. for things mm -hmm. to happen. He is strategic. And right. so we have to be on the defense. Wise. We have to be mm -hmm. wise. Yes. Yep. Yeah. He's watching us, and he's just. Um, watching who he can use to actually deter mm. us cracks come Say, look, on oh. get away from god come on Mizar. my god preaching right praise god so I, like i said i thank god every day for pastor omar yeah man praise god and we thank you for coming thank up you so much. today and sharing your perspective and how, what you got out of it yeah. continue to do your thing i know you're serving it y'all she yeah. be serving in the back so <laughs> yeah. yeah she serves in the back with the lyrics and all kind of different things like that. So she's been putting it in. Yes, Lord. Yes, now she's Give coming God on the, the platform. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Ms. Irma. Thank you, Ms. We appreciate Thank it. Get a hug. Mm. Yes, so powerful, much. powerful. Yes. Oh, Ooh. that was good. I really like that illustration yeah. from Tony Evans. I'm going to remember that. It, yes, yes, um, yes. That was, a, that was really good. Really great, really great. Because, man, hey, man, it's not a game, man. It's not. It's the, not. The enemy is really... Seeking who he made the vow and yeah. get us sidetracked and get us off focus, like on the idols and yeah. different things that Pastor mentioned today. Yep. How you doing, ma'am? I'm doing well. Hello. How are you? Awesome, awesome. <laughs> I'm, we're doing great. We're doing great. Thank you. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes. My name's Tara. I'm last name Tebow. Mm -hmm. Tebow. Okay. Yes. This yes. is Pastor Omar's Tebow sister, y'all. Yes. yes. Just to let y'all know. Big favorite, sister. Favorite sister. Oh, the favorites. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> Come on. So what you got from the word this morning, Miss Tara? My God. Uh, uh, yeah. It was such a revelation. Like, in every service, every sermon, every word, God reveals. Mm. Come on. Yep. And I do believe right now he is 
exposing the enemy, mm. but he's also revealing his plan. Yes. Wow. And I also, for me, um, with revealing his plan, it's like a, uh, like a chef. He doesn't put everything all at once. Ooh. Everything is, Come on. is at the right place at the right time, a little sprinkle here and a little sprinkle there because we may or may not be ready to receive what he has for us all Come at on. once. Yeah. And um, wow, that's good. the enemy doesn't like it. Mm -mm. And he's also revealed to me, you know, stay prayed up, read your word, because the minute mm -hmm. this week comes, he's going to try to mess with that, mess with mm -hmm. your mind. And with spiritual warfare, he wants our heart. Yeah. Ah, they fight. He's fighting for it. He's, yeah. he's fighting for our heart. But what he calling, mm -hmm. and it's crazy because the, the enemy is very slick. And sometimes he even might, I even say, distract us on some blessings. Yes. <laughs> yeah, good things. Just to not get us in that place of relationship. Yeah. Because he know he'd be in trouble. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I used to sit back and I used to, um, he tries to, and I use the word try now. But he always brings you back. And you know, for me with this word today, and it's just it's time for me to stop running. Yeah, Lord. Because where I'm running, I'm all this, you know, like being delivered out of Egypt and walking around the wilderness for 40 years. Mm. It's time to stop. Yeah. Come on, man. And he doesn't put a time limit how we look at it, like, oh, you've been tearing, you've been 47 years, you've been just running. God is, God is not a God of time. No. Yeah. Uh -uh. 47 yeah. years to him is, to me, is 47 seconds to him. Yeah. Yeah. So not it's really. time. Mm -hmm. You yes, know, and, right. and this is this is time. Now is the time. Yeah. Now is the time. Come on. And he's amazing. Come on, he's moving now. That's what good. I tell you. So Man, now, look. you know, and you know me, jokester, something hey. come out. I said, God, you want me to handle it or you going to handle it? <laughs> you know? And then he said, no, he tell me, get out my way. Come so on. he's telling us right now, get out of his way, receive what he has for us mm. and watch him move. Yeah. 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 Watch him move. Watch him move. That's, That's a word. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Miss Tower, I had to stand up on that one. <laughs> oh, we appreciate you coming. Thank up. you so Sharing much. Your perspective, your heart, man. That's amazing. Wasn't that good, y'all? Yeah. Thank you. Man, if y'all enjoyed that, say Great that was good. Great insight. <laughs> great insight. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Man, you have a great Sunday. That was Ooh. so good. Man. And I, I like how she talked about how um, with the enemy, um, a lot of times we can give him too much credit. You yeah. know, a lot of times we can... We can put him in a place that he doesn't belong. Like, he's no. not all-knowing. He's not all-wise. No, he's not omnipresent. No. That's why he goes seek who he may devour. He yeah. moves around. He has to, like Pastor said, he's patient. He waits. He'll wait a generation. He'll wait, too, if he has to. Yes. Until he can get a people to where he wants them to be. But right. he's not all-powerful. No. Not all-powerful. He gets his power from God. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, so that, that was good. That was real good. Real good. All What's right. going on, my brother? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. So tell us your name, man. Um, it's Elijah Edwards McCall. Okay, phone number, social security number. No, I'm just kidding, man. I'm kidding. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you say, man, hold on, wait. I'm, I'm not up here for this. <laughs> man, so tell us a little bit what you got today. Um, well, to, well, today's sermon, I mean, it was about revelation. And, and like I said, that, that really spoke on me very much often. And, and um... I, with, with me personally, I, I think of it like with God and the devil and everything. And mm -hmm. when you when you outside and stuff like that, the, that's the devil's playground. 
mm-hmm. come on, outside and you will. can mm-hmm. and it's like you do all the sins and whatnot but when you come inside the church you gotta you gotta understand that it's god's house right mm-hmm. and right. whatever whatever you do in god's house god's gonna see it yeah. You can't you you can't be holy and in, in his house and then go outside and do yeah. sin. You Come can't on. hide. You can't be lukewarm. And and it's like if you have to sin, then then it's like there's no need to come inside of a church. Mm. Mm. And and at the and at the end of the day, because where where I come in at is is that because I was I was 14, I lost my father, and at an age 16, God told me to um he told me that he was my father and everything my spiritual father father to the father and he brought he he basically brought me from somewhere and and brought me to um to a house of where i know where he was at and he told me to come he he it wasn't like he dragged me here he he gave me the blessing to come to come here and whatnot he drawn mm. you into like he, he basically brought me here come on man. and i and um i but what i did first was i had to put my father somewhere where i know is comfortable at and then i had to then and like i said god just basically brought me here right he mm. took you out of the world yeah and so brought me and brought me here and and it's like at this point, at this point right now, I'm 33 years old. I have a son that's two years old. Come on, dude. And um, now it's like I'm in, I have like a totally demeanor of where God, I'm in God mode of where I can't stop reading the scriptures. I'm stay constantly keep reading the scriptures. And Come on, man. Praise That's great. And um, it's like I study it. I, I sleep it. I wake up. Come on, it, meditate mm. day and night. And I meditate every every night. I I read the um I I listen, I hear um sermons. The sermons. I hear the the podcast. Come mm. on, yes, yes. I like I listen to everything else. It keeps me it keeps me motivated. Mm. Right, right. So so, so how long you been coming to Philly? I've been I've been here ever since. 2019 2019 man change your life huh and like and now i see you serving man yeah and and it's (laughs) it's a blessing like i want to be able to do more but it's one step at a time yeah yeah that's good man as long as you're taking steps take steps man well hey man we appreciate you coming bro sharing your heart your perspective i'm glad what the lord is doing to work in you man he took you out of that and now you're here serving yeah in his in his ministry serving in his for his kingdom yeah Thank Keep you. doing what you do, man. Be encouraged. I will. And uh, we appreciate you, Elijah. Thank you so much. Elijah, I like that name, bro. Thank you. Elijah the prophet. Come on. <laughs> appreciate it, my brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was so good. So good to hear from everybody. Yes. And to hear uh, everybody's insight on Pastor's word. And, yes. You know, making sure that we are, we're focused. We're focused. We yes. focus. Focused on God. Speaking and- yeah. Speaking of focus, <laughs> we're going to focus on the man of God right now. <laughs> Bless you. Hey, guys, we got Pastor Omar. We have Grace and Annalise. How y'all doing today? Good. Doing good. Doing good. All right. Let's see. We got baby T-Bones. All right, ladies. All right. So we y'all have something to share with us this morning on the word? Yes. Can y'all introduce yourself well, to the yes. Please Omar introduce family? Yourself. Well, we're Annalise and Grace. I'm Annalise. She's Grace. And yes. we are the children, the blessed to be, of mm-hmm. Pastor Omar and Praise Grace. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Praise Him. Yes. All right. So what's something y'all got for us this morning? What y'all want to share? That word was mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. I, I agree. I like can say that it was fire and yeah. deep, like on another level. Wow. Yeah, yes. It, the entire thing just to see how the world system was created from the tower of babel from the very beginning yeah from the very beginning it's it's always been you know yeah and just to see that it's like okay we're you know we're up against things that seem to be bigger than us but it's not it's not because at the end of the day guys like checkmate on y'all fools amen Checkmate. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's crazy. You got some? I'm agreeing with you. That is checkmate. God had the card. He was doing like mama. Had her cards. Yeah. Had her cards yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. Was, Close. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. that's so good. So many great points, man. But if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Yes, God. It's amazing, man. Like when you think of Pastor has so many great points. Mm -hmm. So yeah. many great points. I gotta go back and listen to that again. Oh. But it's just crazy, man, because like, man, we really Pastor, you got anything to share? <laughs> Cause I'm a, I'm gonna keep talking. No, y'all good, y'all good. I just, I just wanted to bring the, the, the girls up here, cause uh, yeah, <laughs> they, they like the after show. Oh. And one day, with y'all permission, we may get them to interview some of the other youth and the kids. Oh, that would be good. And y'all can kind of come and supervise and make yeah, sure everything is so good. But good. I That's think they great. were interested in maybe asking their age group some questions in regards to wow. the word and whether they received anything because Absolutely. I don't know sometimes we think they're not listening but mm. they are listening oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying and so yeah. and uh, I just you know I just I just love the part of our story where the enemy thought he had us down mm -hmm. but yeah. God sent that Messiah yeah. wow. through a curveball yeah. Yeah. you know and, and then when he thought that he had us beat again, when he killed the Messiah, yeah. mm. that Jesus died to mm. win, yeah. to win it all. Wow. Yeah. You he know? had to look weak in order to win. Yeah, man. God just held his cards so close. Mm. Yeah. You know, <laughs> for had, had the princes of this world knew, mm. they would have never crucified the My Lord God. of glory. Wow. Yeah. 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 He beat them by using their strength. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. It's kind of like wrestling or MMA. When you beat a man, that's stronger than you, but even though he's not stronger than God, but you you beat a man by his own weight, his own strength, mm -hmm. his own. Wow. God let the enemy beat himself by Jesus. overplaying his aggression, killing the Messiah, and him and the Messiah dying was the way to set us free from the world. Wow. <sighs> yeah. My God, my wow. God. I'm gonna give that back to Annalise. Yeah, that was real good. Drop the mic on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Yeah, order to go back on my favorite parts of the word i need my notes because i'm like oh i like this i like this i like this i like this <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and literally up here i cannot even state everything that just drew that popped out came alive you know yeah and it was it was just crazy it yeah. was crazy yes, it was yes. like one of those moments in a cartoon when it's like Mm, mind, mind, blowing. Blowing. mind blowing yeah yeah right, right but i'm with you grace the history knowing the history and seeing it yeah. you know back in the day like i said with nimrod and all yeah. of that wasn't that amazing to see that yeah and it was amazing to see how like back in the day the the angels came down and showed us come on the wow. like makeup and right. technology the and then to come and back again and for god to come back and say that he has more things hidden Mm. That in fact the things we know is just the surface. Come like on, I'm like, wait, Ooh, my God. Wow. So there's stuff deeper than this? Come on. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around an iPhone. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> so you tell me there's stuff way better than this? Wow. Yeah, it's it's real yeah, it's crazy. Oh my gosh. That's good. Yeah. What you got in the least? He called that wordless compared to the things that he knows. Mm. Yeah. So you have to ask yourself, what's bigger than that? Yeah. Mm. You know I mean? Right, right. Come Literally, on, man. it's almost like if you think about it too much, you'll blow your brain. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yes, my right. Right. yeah. It, really, it really is. Blow your mind. Huh? I'm just be like, okay, <laughs> yes, <laughs> whatever you say. So yeah, yeah. Wow, that's so good, y'all. Y'all had anything else that stood out to y'all? That's huh? some good stuff. I don't want to be like ten minutes. So yeah, <laughs> I don't want to take, take your time. time. Take your time. We're here. No, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm pretty good. much sure this is blessing so many people yes. who's online. Online family, y'all say hi to online fam. Hello, hey y'all. Yes. <laughs> so, man, well. Yeah. We appreciate y'all coming yes. up. Thank you so much. Look, don't don't let this be our first time. Y'all come no. up. Yeah. <laughs> y'all come back up. All right, yes. we got y'all. But we gonna we gonna take pastor at that uh, challenge. Like, yeah. When we can get some youth to come up, mm -hmm. for maybe sure. they can make an announcement for announcements and say, hey, we want to get some kids. You know what I'm saying? To come up and share their heart. Yeah, definitely. Because you're right, them kids are paying attention. They listening. Right. So that would be awesome. I can't wait. Well, thank y'all so thank much. Man, thank y'all so much. I love this show. So I know, right? Man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. And look, we look we looking forward to seeing some more videos on YouTube. Ah, yes, yeah, some yeah, more yeah, man yeah, a minute. Y'all yeah. blessing us. Y'all yes. well, are blessing us. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Youth man a minute. I love it. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Well guys, this was amazing. This was good. Great show today. 
Yes, we even had a surprise. Yeah. Grace and Annalise with Pastor Omar. With some good stuff. Yeah. Like, it was such a blessing to hear from them and hear that they grasp little nuggets yeah. from the word that yes. are some deep things. Some things that, man, like some grown adults cannot. Yeah, get. difficult. So that's to, amazing. It's a grasp. That's how you know their they're pastor is putting the word in them. They're yeah. listening. They're yeah. in a great atmosphere, a great yes. home. Yes, so you look, definitely see the fruits of it. You see them. your fruits. You see the fruits. Yeah, Lord. So yes, man, this was amazing. We thank you all for tuning in today. Thank you all for staying to the after show, yep. reflecting on the word. We're going to work on something to get you on here too. Because we yeah. want to hear your hearts and what y'all got. Yeah. What y'all have to say about the word. Because we all family and we all have a story and we all see things. And we all listening to the same words so we just like to hear what you have to say yeah so we want to thank y'all for this time thank y'all for joining us we go pray most high god we thank you lord god thank you for your word thank you lord god for using pastor in a mighty way yeah. to break the scriptures down lord god in a way where we can see the enemy and his tricks we can see how he's moving we can see father god we can see that we are the people and we know that he's really trying to attack us and get us sidetracked but we know that no weapon form against us shall prosper yeah for the god we just pray that you will continue to be with us give us discernment to notice his tricks help us to walk in obedience to walk in light to be salt and, and light in this world Lord yeah. god bless us throughout this weekend bless us throughout our week for the god may everywhere we go be blessed everything we touch be blessed have your way in our life we give you all the glory and we thank you for all what you're doing we say all these things in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. God bless y'all. Love y'all.